Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are Poll on the Call podcast. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And today we are so excited to be here with the amazing Amy Guyon of Poll Sport Organization. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you got my name right. <laughs> I have to admit, I, I had to ask around because I did not know. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so sweet. No, it's, um, you know what? You get used to your last name being pronounced wrong, like all the time. And then when somebody uh, gets it right, it's just like, ooh, like, so uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> so starting off on the right foot. Yes. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for taking the time to be, meet with us today and tell us a little bit about your poll journey, a little bit about um, PSO and all of that, and maybe a little bit about the future as well. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Uh, Let's so do it. Such a pleasure. All right, calm myself down. It's like, <laughs> um, how do you say fangirl moment? <laughs> right. Oh, you're so sweet. So sweet. I'm like a really average person. It's kind of funny. Like, I don't know. I guess if you're on stage all the time or like, I mean, I don't even really perform as much like anymore, but I used to. And you have this like on stage personality where I'm like very like outgoing and like fierce and whatever. And then in my normal life, I'm sort of like, I'll just be over here. Like, <laughs> so don't care, girl. I'm a, I'm a normal person. Yeah, very normal. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll start, like, easy and simple with how did you get into pole? What started your pole dancing journey? Yes. Okay. So um, I guess, let's see. So I looked for a pole dancing class that I uh, for my 20th birthday. I was like, I want to do something weird and you know, whatever. And my birthday, I re I remember very clearly it was on a Wednesday. And so you're kind of like, okay, well, I guess people don't really go out on Wednesdays. I was also 20. So you can't like actually go out. So I was looking for some activity or thing to do. And I don't know why I'd heard about pole dancing or like whatever, but I Googled it and I was living in Los Angeles and there was a studio that like popped up in Hollywood. So I was like pole dancing in Hollywood, like for my birthday, like this is amazing. Um, and it was at Beast Fun. So I booked the class. I brought a girlfriend and I went and I remember, so I took my first class with Leanne Orsi and she's lovely and has been you know, a friend for really my whole adult life. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. Right. And so she came in and she was like, you know, we're going to start with like a freestyle. And I'm kind of like, okay, like free dance, like freestyle, like what exactly is this? So I had this background in ballet where you would not do, you just do choreography. Like they just set it on you and you repeat it and you try to live up to their standards and that's how it goes. And she was like, well, for this, like free dance, you are going to move in a way that makes you feel good. And I was like, I have no idea what that means. Like, that is crazy. Okay. Like, cool. And then like, you know, I'm kind of like, body roll I'm, I'm sure it was horrible but like you know kind of like body rolling and I was like oh I can like touch myself and this is really amazing uh and so I was hooked from like that first class uh and I think that if that free dance or that freestyle was like a huge part of Beast Bun or you know has been a huge part of Beast Bun for really the whole time that that studio has been in existence because this is back in like 2008 and I think it was such a positive like exercise and like activity uh, that the, the studio did really, really well, kind of based around that freestyle. I love that. That's, um, that's like, sounds so much fun to start with. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, in 2008, there just weren't that many studios really either. So I think I got really yeah. lucky that I had stumbled, like, randomly via Google upon, you know, this one place that was very special. Um, and and I don't I don't even really recall what the other options were, but yeah, so I was very lucky. I think it's also really funny that you were drawn in by the freestyle because usually like freestyle petrifies new pole dancers. I feel like, and then you were like, oh, <laughs> well, I <laughs> mean, I think I, I mean. was. I think I was like not very. I think I was freaked out, but I also think that like they created this like a really good like container like space for it and so I was like okay well I guess if I'm bad at it I have one friend here I don't know any of these other people I have no idea who this teacher is and so I guess if I'm bad I'm just bad like oh well <laughs> yeah 
if we wanted to do something new and different and you don't really like sign up for classes necessarily because you're good at something like you Mm -hmm. sign up to like get better and hopefully if you have a good teacher they like appreciate that and then yeah that's awesome (laughs) oh and then you were hooked after that and then um how long after that before you started um teaching oh gosh uh I probably okay it only works because again, it was like my birthday. And so it's easier to like count the years. So I was there in 2008 and then I graduated from university in 2009. So I was like at a university in LA. That's how I came to live in Los Angeles. Um, so 2009, not great economic conditions, like for the world, right? Like, so 08 was like recession, like housing crash, like all of that. And so I graduated and was kind of like, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Like, for a job or what I want to do. Um, so I majored in pre-physical therapy. So you don't get like, you can't do anything with that degree other than like apply and go to like graduate school if you wanted to become a physical therapist. And I think at that point in my life, I was like, you know what? I've been in school for a while. I've been good at school and it was, you know, fine, but I'm ready to maybe like move on to something else. And so Leanne, I'd been working for her as a work study at the studio to like trade, you know, and get classes. And so I think probably in 2010 was the year that I started like teaching. And then I also was managing the studio like at the same time. So she had a gym. Her husband at the time also had a studio that did mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, uh, like wrestling, that kind of stuff. And they were next door to each other, like even sharing like a door in between them. So eventually what happened was I would manage be spun and then also ended up managing legends which was the other location and then we ended up moving that whole thing and moved it to like a big warehouse space uh so that it was all like combined under one roof so i guess long story short it was probably about two years <laughs> wow that's amazing yeah. and then did you um did you always think that you wanted to like manage and like be like in charge of everything or did that just kind of like fall upon you <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, I mean, I think that for me, I've always really liked organization. So I, and I guess that's like a very like kind of nerdy thing to say, cause I really do take it to like a big, like a very large extreme. Um, I worked at, when I was in a uh, university, I worked at Starbucks, um, you know, like as a barista or whatever, like while I was in school and I like, remember like a very significant part of that job being like, just fascinated by like, Oh, they have like recipes. And like a process and like for, for everything, like, you know, there's a process for opening, there's a process for closing, there's a process for like organizing, like the food, there's a process for like the milk, like all of this stuff. And I was very excited about that and just thought that that was such like a positive thing that you could like take and like apply to kind of all these different areas of your life. And so I guess when I look at a place, like I would look at like, say, be spun and be like, oh, Like if we just organize like a little bit here and like a little bit over here, somehow it will all work better. And I don't know, like maybe that was just naive of me, but I think as I applied it in different ways, like it did seem to work. Um, And I think that like, you know, Leanne and I had a really good relationship where I think she is a wonderful like visionary. Like she created Pull Show LA, which I think is, you know, just an amazing show. Um, and, and she has this like, oh, and then the stage is going to be beautifully lit like this way. And then the costumes are going to be like over here. And then I'm over in the back going like, okay, so like how many lights do I have to order? And like, where do they have to be placed? Or like how many, you know, how many people do we need? And like, do we need like volunteers to do stuff or like how many cars have to go back and forth between the venue to like get all this done? Um, and so I think that that's maybe why we like gravitated towards each other, like working together in that capacity. Um, so she was kind of like this big picture kind of person. And then I really felt like I was good at, I guess, like sort of like behind the scenes, like kind of getting it all like in a row. Yeah. That's so funny. You, you definitely like filled in the spaces, but it sounds like you were just a natural like leader in that aspect. That's so awesome. Oh, <laughs> I always wonder, like, it seems like, because I, you know, uh, as a studio owner, I'm, I'm more of a dancer and like taking over a whole studio is really overwhelming to me. But it, but for you, <laughs> you were like, 
this is it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I guess like I like, maybe I'm just particular. I like things to be in their little places and then also like creating the little places for the things to be. So yeah, it, mm. it's fun. Yes. It was, it was a match made in heaven. It felt right. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. I love that also too, you were inspired by the Starbucks experience. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I'm from Seattle. So I guess it's like, maybe there's like a tie in because Starbucks was also founded in Seattle. But um, yeah, it, uh, and it still sort of constantly like amazes me. Like I like going into different businesses, even like now and being like, hmm, like, how does it work? Like, how does it function? And that's always been really fascinating. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, um, so you, you talked about like, you came from a ballet background. Do you have any sort of other movement background? No, um, I did ballet like really seriously. So when I was growing up, like I would leave like high school early to like go to ballet class. Um, so I went to this school in Seattle that's called Pacific Northwest Ballet. And it's like a very, I guess like a pre-professional like sort of track. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really good. I think that like you hear horror stories of people who do ballet that like, uh, you know, that they have really traumatic teachers that tell them horrible things about themselves and like you know whatever and certainly like our school was not you know so they were not kind about everything so I don't want to say that they like coddled us or whatever but it was definitely like not the you have to starve yourself and like you know weigh yourself or like you know work out for eight hours a day in addition to doing all these classes and so my experience was actually quite positive and then maybe it's again, like where I enjoyed that sort of like discipline and like organization and like all of the things being the way that they are supposed to be. Um, but I had, I had wonderful teachers. Uh, we had performing opportunities, you know, really since I was like eight, um, there was yearly productions where you would perform with the adult ballet. So it wasn't like a kid's production. It was like children's roles, but in the adult productions. And so you got to perform on these really beautiful stages, um, you know, with like 3000 seats, uh, that was all at a really run at a really, really high level. And you were expected to conduct yourself, you know, also at a very high level, even if you were eight or 10 or, or whatever. Um, and so that was all like really awesome. And then we also got an infusion of Horton modern, which is like a, so modern dance is like a particular kind of dance. Uh, Horton is a particular kind of technique, uh, which is very difficult. Um, but also so interesting. And I think that those two things like blended together, you know, gave me a really wonderful experience. Uh, but from there, I chose not to, so I, I kind of had like a divergent path. Um, I was going to select either whether I went to university at the end of it or whether I stayed doing dance. And I had received um, an invitation to do this like Fordham Ailey program um, in New York when I graduated. And so you basically get like a bachelor's of fine arts and dance. And then you study at Alvin Ailey, the Ailey school, which is like the, yeah, amazing. <laughs> Amanda, you're like, yeah, yeah. So it, it's a great school. Um, and that was a really, really cool opportunity. But then I also had a full ride to go to an academic, uh, you know, institution and study physical therapy. So I ended up going the physical therapy route. I had had an injury that I was like, well, this isn't really like a career ending injury, but it kind of was the wake up call of, oh, but like, if your leg hurts and you can't dance anymore, that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah. And so that's how I ended up in Los Angeles at uh, Loyola Marymount. So it's like a small school down, down in LA. And that's that. So you've been performing for years. Were you able to um, continue performing in pole dancing once you started getting into pole dancing? Have you done yeah. competitions or showcases? Yes, yes, many, many things, uh, many things. So at Beast Fun, I was part of Pole Show LA for a long time. So that was obviously an amazing opportunity to perform in like a big production. Um, all of the competitions I think that I have done don't exist anymore, which like I, I sometimes like laughingly refer to myself as a pole dino uh, because it's, I, I like, I'm that old in pole age that all of these events, um, you know, are sort of like things of the past. So USPDF was a big one. Uh, that was a big competition in New York that, uh, I guess lots of people of my quote unquote generation were big fans of and, and, uh, lots of beast on people did that too. 
Uh, there was the Midwest pole dance uh, competition. We had California pole dance championship. So those are kind of the big ones, I guess, of my time. And I did all of those for a couple of years. Uh, and then after that, uh, I did Girl Next Door, which was a big show in Los Angeles, but also doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, I promise I did perform, just not in things that are around <laughs> this time. I believe you. That's so sad, though. Is Pole Show LA still running at least? Mm -mm. No, their last one. I think, you know, oh, COVID was really tough for a lot of people, including myself. Uh, that that for PSO was, was also not the most... Uh, comfortable of years <laughs> which I feel like I've emotionally sort of gotten over it at this point but but it was COVID was quite quite difficult for me Damn, I wonder, that, but you no, I want to so <laughs> I want to mention too um during COVID I I appreciated all that you did for for us pole dancers because like we didn't have anything going on and like the PSO unicorn show was really fun um I participated in that and it was yeah, really fun yeah. to watch and it was like you know getting us all back into the spirit of things and then the virtual competitions mm -hmm. um you know I I, I love that <laughs> I know a lot of yeah people love that too, so. yeah no we have like a whole crew of people now who are doing so so during COVID I think our team kind of went we're just going to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and kind of see what sticks. And then, it, and then it, it uh, evolved over time. So like in the beginning we did some shows we learned, I learned how to like live stream. So one of our other staff members was like, yeah, like we can totally do this. And we were like, no, this is crazy. Uh, but we cobbled it together and it seems like it actually like worked like pretty well. So we did the shows um, for a bit. We did fundraising. We did uh, like virtual competitions. And so the virtual competitions are still around. We do four of them a year and they are really, really fun. Actually, some people uh, like a different almost group of people doing them, which is kind of fun to also see like kind of a new group of pollers. And then I love, I guess, just the like looking at everyone's backgrounds and being like, you have a nice studio like oh that's a good setup like I would not have thought to do that like those are cool lights and to get like inspired by people's spaces um and even in that in the virtual shows we also have a category called no pull no problem because there was like you know if you, especially like back at the beginning if you didn't have a studio or you didn't have a pull at your home we were like okay well go dance like on your porch. And so people were doing these like porch couch dances and like this stuff. And I just, I loved that like creativity and, and positivity. That's not so much fun. <laughs> it was fun, it was fun. So, yeah, like I, I definitely appreciated how you kept everyone enthusiastic even though we were all stuck at home and like being creative with our porches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, it helped me too, you know, cause I think that like, I actually, I was like, we're never going to do virtual. Like, this is crazy. And then there was another person who was on staff, um, Jordan Mazur. She's a, also a lovely human being. I, I love all the people that I get to work with. Like, that's probably the best part of my job is being like, oh, that person is like so nice. And I get to call them today, like for business. Like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So Jordan had like, I think we'd been texting and I was sort of depressed about like everything. Uh, I think that, you know, at the time, which is, is true. I, I felt like, you know, my job had become illegal, which was like so weird that overnight, you know, you're just like, no, you are not allowed to do the thing that you like doing. And so I was sort of depressed and, and she had, you know, messaged me and was like, I think, I think virtual would work. And I was like, no, like, I don't think so. Like nobody wants to do that. Everyone's sick of being on zoom and blah, blah. And she was like, okay, well, I have like some students in my studio who would like sign up. Like if you if you hosted it and, and she was not, you know, she didn't pressure me. It wasn't like, you know, like crazy, like you have to do whatever, but it was just this like push of like, yeah, that like, there's people out there and they want, they want a competition. So that's kind of how we started doing virtuals. Um, so I'm very grateful to her for that. Yeah. And like, even now, like um, the virtual competitions really make the like competing more accessible for everyone too. Cause there's, you know, a lot of our students are like too frightened to get on the stage, but they'll 
they're able to like put a video together and that gives them mm-hmm. still the opportunity to get the medal and yes. get all the comments from everyone online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think like, you know, it's, it's just the first step. I'll get you on stage, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eventually maybe you'll go on stage, but until then. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then also, you know, people have gotten really creative and also very like high quality with their productions too so then you have like a wonderful you know memento of your work if you've produced this like awesome video for yourself so yeah I think it's it's good on a bunch of levels um so since we're talking about PSO and you went into how virtual started how did you create start the whole thing um I'm sure your experience and your need for organization helped you a lot, but I can't even imagine where you probably started to what you are now. It's just incredible. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we started, uh, so I, like I had said, competed in these other organizations and, um, you know, that was sort of our only opportunity to perform. There wasn't like a whole lot of other stuff, uh, but it was all based on video submissions. So you would make a video at the studio, which was generally a like full length, you know, routine. And most of them were, or at least for me, they were all freelance, like freestyled. So like you'd go to the studio and you'd be like, okay, like I got to get this right in like three freestyles because I can't like, like, like stamina wise, like I won't be able to like do more than that. <clears throat> but you, you know, you've sort of put together these like loose freestyles or like loose routines and then you would submit them to the organization. They would select maybe like 12 or 14 people. And those would be the people who were invited to go and perform. So I was very fortunate that I was selected, uh, you know, by m- different organizations to perform. But I think that like, you know, I also saw that there were people at my studio who didn't get into the competitions, but were not like worse than me like I think that for us with the submissions like once you kind of got into a couple of them and you started making a name for yourself we we really got um you know in touch on like YouTube and Facebook kind of like in this generation so once you kind of had that going you would get into like more competitions I think because you were a little bit more like known but it was like well I don't know this other person who teaches in my studio is definitely just as good as me and I, I don't know why they're not getting in like they should probably be beating me on these videos, but, but they're maybe not. Um, so I think that that was like one inspiration to try to like maybe open the competitions to more than just these like 14 people like on stage. And then also as I was going to, you know, traveling and doing these different events, it was disappointing in different ways to like show up and have put in all this work into your routine, like where you're, you know, just like everyone else trains, right? You train for hours, you like buy a costume or you make a costume and you spend hours doing that. You cut your music like just right so that it fits exactly what you're trying to, you know, produce. And you think about every like fingertip and piece of hair and all of that. And then you get to the event and, you know, they're like, oh, it's, it's running, you know, two hours late. And you're like, oh man, like that sucks. Okay. You know, but you roll with it and you're like, okay, no, no big deal. And then they're like, oh, well, we were supposed to have like real polls, but now we have a next stage. And you're like, oh, okay, well, also sucks, uh, you know, to put all that. And I think that that whole thing culminated in, there was an event that like had a bunch of those things that got together. Like it was super late. There was next stage. It was like, we were warming up in like a closet with like a dirty floor, you know, all of that stuff. And, And I think that it just didn't feel like all of the work that I put in, you know, was it worth it? Like, I don't know, to then like turn around and have an organizer, like maybe not do the best job at like putting all that together. So I think that that made me sort of think like, well, could it, could it be done? Is it, is it, is it that difficult that like all of these things really have to happen, that it all has to kind of fall apart at the end because it's really so difficult to produce or is it possible with, you know, my crazy level of organization? Like, can, can we make it like even a little bit better? Like, can we guarantee you that you're always going to have real polls? can we guarantee you that they're always going to be like about eight feet apart? Like, is that unreasonable or is it reasonable? So that's kind of, I think the journey that, that we went on, I had a business partner at the time. Um, and so she and I uh, put, you know, all of this together, uh, together as a team. And I think that she also contributed, she used to be a amateur ice skater. So a lot of the stuff that she took, like for say the judging or like, you know, even opening it up to amateurs and being like, yes, this is totally a thing that's like possible 
um, that helped us kind of develop the first PSO. But the first PSO, like when I think back on it, it was, I think I didn't sleep for like four days, like before that, because I was like, so like everything has to go, you know, perfectly. And we were behind on whatever it was. And I look at photos of it and it looks like, I don't know, sort of funny, like someone just sort of stuck it together. It was not very like attractive. Um, I don't think the way that we had it all set up, but it worked um, and it took forever. I think it took like 12 hours for us to host like 60 people, which is, I guess now with the number of people that we put on stage is, is sort of laughable because <laughs> we go a lot faster, you know, through things. But um, but everybody had a really, really good time. And so I think that that just inspired us to like keep going. And we saw 60 amazing people that we would have never seen at a different event. And even people who were like not at that, say, highest level, like really like everybody has something to contribute. Like it's either the bravery of you know, showing up and getting on stage or it's an amazing trick or it's like a funny routine, uh, but, but the, everybody's personality like comes out and, and you get a little bit from everyone's performance. And I think that that's what makes like the amateur, you know, stuff like so interesting and valuable. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, I, it, you know, uh, for brand new pullers too, that like they see like, oh, there's competitions, but they think that they can never do it. But this is definitely a competition that you can do at any level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like all of the, the, well, most of the, the pullers that we've interviewed have all been PSO competitors. And we've all said like, you know, we've all started at like level two, like we go yeah. up and like up and through and, and it's been a really good experience the whole way through our poll journey. <laughs> Good, good. Well, you know, and, and I hope that like, it's one aspect of someone's whole journey too. like, I don't think the competition has to be everyone's everything. Um, certainly it can be if you if you choose it to be. But I do think that like, if you are really into pole dancing, and you are really into the industry, like even doing it like one time just to like see what that experience is like, I think it makes you appreciate the work that goes into someone's routine. So that when you maybe go to a different a competition, just to like watch, you're like, Oh, I really know. Like I really know <laughs> like how that is. Or I feel, you know, you feel more connected to people. Um, and then you meet a lot of really other great uh pole dancers, uh, you know, in your local area that you might not see at your studio. But that's also one of my favorite things about traveling and going to the different shows is mm. oh, I haven't seen my friends or this group of people that I like, maybe don't talk to all the time, but I really like them. And so I go to an event and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to see them. Like, they're so fun. Like, I like that uh, <laughs> part of it. Yes. <laughs> so um, how many PSOs are there a year? I guess um, it would be different pre COVID, but um, how, how is it about now? Yeah. So pre COVID, we were doing about 30 shows a year. Um, right now, I think that we're doing, I think this year it's 17 and then four virtuals on top of that. So I guess we count 21. Um, but yeah, I, it's been, it's been, yeah, COVID's been a ride. COVID's definitely been a ride. Um, I have also a wonderful partner now, a different partner in Europe um, named Miriam Kessler. So she runs all of our European shows. Uh, we kind of kept it small this year and I think it's going to scale up um, over there next year and yeah, just trying to reopen and get going. That's amazing. And then like you were talking about all of the different things, like, like, uh, you know, making sure that you can have the polls at this spacing and like making sure that the capacity of the audience is enough in the backstage areas. Um, how many people work to, on your team to make all of the things happen? <laughs> oh my gosh, so many people, so many people. So we kind of divide like our organization into like two teams, like on the back end. So we have what we call admin team. And those are kind of the logistical planner people uh, who work uh, like outside of the event. And then we have travel team, which is the people who actually show up and go to the event. And some people who are on admin team, like some people are on both. Uh, but our admin team consists of a logistics manager named Sam. She's great. Uh, we have a customer service uh, person, Christina. She's also great. So if you have her email, you're talking to her. Uh, we have Morgan, who is the head of the photo video department. Um, he's new this year and he's 
also great. Um, he's actually a silks uh, instructor and an acrobatics instructor too. So he's got a movement background and has been a personal friend of mine for a long time. So he's really wonderful. Um, so it's really the, the three of them and me that kind of compose the planning process. And so that's everything from like booking the venue to putting together like the volunteer schedule to managing the website to marketing, finance, like all of that stuff. Um, and then we have the travel team. So those are people who like actually go to the event and that's composed of, I want to say that I think it's like 25 people, but we get, send seven to every event. So if you try to go to all the shows, you're a crazy person. <laughs> so that's why we have to like pick in, you know, for, so that people aren't getting like totally overwhelmed. I think I went to 15 events one year and I was promptly after that, like so sick for like four months, <laughs> just from like too much travel and like too much not sleeping. And um, it was a good time, but I, I don't think that I would do that to someone else and, and probably not to myself again. Uh, but the seven people then who would go, so we have like an operations manager and that person runs everything from like feeding the staff to managing the load in the load out, helping the volunteers get to their positions and like training them on like what they need to be doing maybe filling in if somebody like doesn't show up. So that person is kind of a, a setup, tear down, and then fill in all the gaps um, at the show. Uh, we have a person who sets up our trust. Uh, so they do like trust in the polls and they help everybody kind of on and off stage, making sure that like the stage area like stays safe. So that's really awesome. He's really great. Uh, we have a front of house person, which is generally the position that I work if I go. So that's like, checking people in, selling merchandise, taking tickets, um, you know, sort of being the face, like at the front, helping people out, directing traffic, um, which is very my personality. So like, that's the kind of where like, I like to live. Uh, we have a judge wrangler. Uh, the judge wrangler is the person that manages all the judges. Uh, we also have a computer, like judging system that manages all of the scoring and tabulations and stuff. And so she sets that all up, make sure that people can log in answers questions, um, gives deductions if that has to be done, uh, and then calls like the show. So really like we're all on WhatsApp talking to each other during the event. And so she'll call like, okay, next person up or like judges are ready basically. And that kind of cues the whole cycle to get started. And then um, our last person on team is a music manager. And so that person is like the audio, um, but there are a lot more than like a DJ. They're kind of like a backstage manager, I would say. So they sit in the back, they're running all the sound. Uh, but that really also controls the show because if there's no song, like there's no performance, like start, right? So that person is, you know, helping out people backstage, getting people on and off and, uh, you know, controlling that. So many people. I believe, I knew you had a lot of volunteers, but that's incredible. You have such a good team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we couldn't do it without the team. Like, mm -hmm. and, and that's fun. We're all quite close. So mm -hmm. it's also fun to like go to the different shows and be like, who am I working with this weekend? Oh, I love that person. Yeah. Like, this will be really fun. <laughs> so that's always a good time too. Do you get to enjoy your travels when you visit these shows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, definitely. I think it, it would depend, obviously, if I have other stuff and I have to like leave right away. But a lot of us will stay like a day or two after to either like enjoy the city or to like visit a friend. Um, I was saying like, I'm from Seattle. So often like I'll schedule myself to go to one of the Seattle shows and then like go see my family like afterwards. Um, my sister also, uh, one of my sisters also pole dances. And so she'll come like volunteer usually and like hang out and help. So that's really fun. Or I have another friend, uh, for example, who was living in North Carolina and she's also a polar. So I was like, Oh, like come to the show and like hang out with me. And so that was cool too. Yeah. Nice. that's good it's not all work <laughs> not all work it's been a lot I would I'm not gonna lie this last two years it has been pretty much all work but in prior years and we'll get back to it I'm optimistic yeah. yes oh my gosh well what um what was was there any like outstanding PSO moment in history that you want to share with us An outstanding like your favorite moment? PSO moment Oh gosh, I don't know if I have a favorite PSO moment. I think like I have collections of them, like for sure. I think that like, so my experience as a performer on stage was like very powerful for me. Uh, I think that like, you know, we have this phrase, which you've probably heard in PSO if you've like read our website and says, have your moment. And the moment 
that you're having or that I think you should be having, I guess is the one that I've had, you know, a bit when I perform. And so it's this time where you do your whole routine and there's like a second sometimes before you finish where there's almost like this pause where like the audience is silent, like you're done, like you're sitting in your like final pose and you're just like, oh, like I did it. Yes. And it's that moment that I want people to be having like when they're on stage. And so when I can see people like visibly having that, like that to me, I'm just like, oh, I got it. Got it. Like I got you. <laughs> and um, and because I think that it's really powerful and it, it's this amazing, like, I guess it's a confidence booster, but it's this, this sense of self, I think, or at least it was with me where I'm like, yeah, like a bad bitch like I did that like that was cool so I like I like seeing other people kind of having that and then I also um I don't know when people receive their awards and they they cry like that to me is like no like we really gotcha like thanks thanks for coming um because it's this like really overwhelming yeah like like emotional moment for people and I've had that moment too where it's like all of your hard work has kind of rolled up into, into that, that medal or that opportunity to be on stage and, and they cry. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know that one too. Like I got it. I love that. <laughs> right though. And like, I definitely had that moment every single time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so incredible. You get to, you really allow all sorts of pole dancers have that moment rather than like you said back in the day where it's the select few and it's always pretty much the same few and not many people got to put their names out there yeah and i think that like performing just like anything else like in pole is this like skill and maybe some people are more comfortable with it in the beginning than than others and that's also very normal but you get better at performing as you go. And so I also love seeing like Mandy, like what you were saying, where you started at like a lower level and then you kind of move on to these like higher levels. I love seeing pullers like come back and you're like, oh, I remember them from last year. This is different. Okay. Like we've improved. Like this is awesome. And so that improvement is also amazing to watch because you, you know, it's sometimes people go from being incredibly like shy where all of their comments are like, I mean, your tricks are great, but like, where's your face or like, you know, we, we never saw your eyes to, you know, they're like, you know, getting all up in there and, you know, making faces and, and, you know, touching themselves and being like, yes, like this is me. And to watch that like transformation, I think we see that in the studio, but also then to see it like on stage, then in front of a large group of people, uh, I think also speaks to like how, how people's like journeys are, are very amazing and positive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know for a lot of like our students when they come in there, they have no dance background. So then there's this like opportunity where like, oh, you could be on the stage and you can, you know, train like an athlete and be a pole dancer. It's really empowering. And, and they see like our students, like just because of they've been on stage at PSO, like growing um, as dancers and and it's, it's awesome to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, and I hope that it's good for the studios too, or I think it's good for the studios as well. Like, you know, it's building like a community. Like if you're running like a team and everyone's traveling together, or, like training together, people get quite attached, you know, to each other. And I think also to the studio. Um, so I do think that there's uh, some good benefit there too. Agreed. We definitely utilize the team competition workshops. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, is it your turn to ask a question? Or <laughs> I, <laughs> I know. I, I uh, this one wasn't on the list, but I just thought of it because um, after yeah, asking about the favorite PSO moment, was there any like um, what was the like weirdest prop that someone has submitted? <laughs> the weirdest prop. Oh gosh. Um, I don't know if it's like weird, but probably like just entertaining. Uh, <laughs> so we had um, somebody who did a routine and it's been a couple of years. And so forgive me if I'm like totally remembering this wrong, but she did like a love song to like a bottle of dry hands. And so it was like this, like, I mean, 
when I say giant, I mean, it's like a life-size, like cardboard, like dry hand thing that somebody built. And, um, and, and so it was like this ode to like, you know, the magic of dry hands, which is my favorite grip. <laughs> so I completely agree that, uh, that that's a routine that like lives in my heart. And that was pretty great. So is that one available for us to watch? I was really <laughs> Um yeah, I can send it. I can try to send it to you or I know the person who it is. And so if I can find a video, I'll send it to you. That sounds so that. funny. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Right though, That's that so makes me really good. inspired about creative. Yeah, because that was um, you know, I've never used a prop before and I was trying to use a prop for PSO Northeast and I'm like, yeah, I'm like tying this like ribbon to the bottom of my shoe and I'm like walking around with it. I'm like this really looks like I have toilet paper stuck to my <laughs> shoe. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should go entertainment. Maybe I should like go with this idea. But to know we that people had, are really. <laughs> we have had a bathroom piece. Uh, we did. We did. That was a long time ago. There was toilet paper involved. <laughs> so yeah, it's about using the bathroom and uh, dreaming about becoming a ninja. Love that, was a good, that was a good one. That was also a good one. <laughs> Yeah, That's so the so creativity funny. is 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 really unlimited. Right? Yeah, everyone's so creative. <laughs> it it oh makes God. me like, rethink my hope. No, let I me mean, right? not <laughs> Northeast <laughs> coming around the corner. I can't rethink the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you can't redo it. You can't redo it now. But but next year, next year. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. I love to always ask because it's always fun to hear what is so this is the twofer your favorite poll trick and maybe your poll nemesis okay favorite poll trick and poll nemesis so my favorite trick I would say is probably a jade which I guess is like sort of basic but I just think that first of all everybody loves a jade there's nobody who doesn't love a jade like if you pull out a jade everyone claps for you so I'm like crowd pleasing jade like you got this um, I also was not very flexible as I was growing up. So I, and I think I've, I've talked about this on other interviews that I've done, but I couldn't do the splits until I was, I think 16. And when I was a performer, that was like something that I was known for was being like fairly flexible. Like I was not a contortionist, but like I had like really nice lines and like, and I still still do, I think, uh, have really nice lines and like good splits and all of that. So I think because it took me as a kid so long to get splits, now when I can do them, you know, on the pole, then I'm like, oh yeah, like this is a good one. Like I like that. So yeah, if you, I used to, you know, choreograph or do stuff and be like, oh, I should probably do something other than splits. Like I need to do, I need a different shape or I have to like add another shape because we're doing too many, too many splits right now. So yeah, so I would say Jade is probably my favorite. Um, I would say pull nemesis trick. So there's two tricks that I've actually never gotten. Um, and not to say that, that maybe I won't get them in the future, but I do think that they require, a, you know, a, a bit of training. So spatchcock never got spatchcock. And I think that that also has to do with this flexibility thing where it's not a flexibility that I've really trained. And so I think probably if I did work on it, I could get it like over a period of time, um, but it's not one that you don't do. You don't do spatchcock looking shapes in ballet. So not one that like I spent, you know, years trying to do. So there's that one. Um, and then I never got a Phoenix. Never got a Phoenix. I think that's a wonderful, beautiful move. Um, I think it's, it's also quite difficult on your shoulders. And I think that, you know, I'm 16 years in and my right shoulder is 16 years in. And so I, I don't know that that will be one that I will attempt, but I do think it's really beautiful. And I know when people do it, I'm always like, oh, that's a good one. I love that the spatchcock I've accepted will never happen for me. And that <laughs> Phoenix, you're so right. I've tried. I'm about five, six years with my shoulder, so I don't know if it's gonna happen either. Yeah, you know what? And and I think though, I, I really do believe for most people though, like like these are achievable. Like it, it might mean that like that's going to be your goal for a long time and you have to put in the work and you have to build yourself like a training plan. But I do think that like, if you, if, if that's what you really want and you really want to like train for it, I, I do think that they're possible. So true. So true. Maybe one day. 
<laughs> you, you'll definitely get them before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And then maybe they should add the spatchcock training to ballet. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this was a question that was asked from um, our viewers and they wanted to know um, how you, what are your thoughts of, about pole becoming an Olympic sport soon? Yeah, absolutely. So pole in an Olympic sport, I know it's sometimes a little controversial in our community. I would say for myself personally, it's not a personal goal of mine for PSO. Uh, I think that there are other organizations who are a much further along down the line of creating like all of the content and regulation and all of that that goes into it. Now, I do think that if they succeed, it's going to be amazing for our industry. It will catapult our industry into the limelight on a completely different level. I think it will be amazing for businesses who are in poll, for studio owners, for people who will go like, oh, this is something that's like now more mainstream and that they would love to like give it a shot. So I think if another group wants to get on it and go for it, like really go for it. Like, you know, I fully support you. I just don't think that for us, that for PSO, that that's really the angle that we would want to go for. There's so much art and creativity that goes on in our events that I think would be not possible at that kind of level. And I also think that like at the amateur level, adding in like all of those requirements, it just makes things a little bit like less accessible. And I would rather be a training ground, uh, you know, for, for baby pullers rather than trying to to deal with this sort of like gymnastic style like code of points um but very you know good vibes to them and and good luck like for sure because it'll raise us all up if they succeed yeah i love that it's so true it definitely raises us up but i'm i like to hear that with pso you just staying true to your nature and keeping it accessible for everyone because that's so important. yeah yeah, you know, we can still like start and in PSO too and like train to be an Olympic athlete. Like that's <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, and I think yeah, and if you end up if if you want to go that route and you end up doing say like our championship, you're maybe not going to get evaluated on the code of points, but certainly like a routine which would win a, a competition like that will do very well, you know, in a in a championship routine. Yes. <laughs> So exciting. But yeah, I totally agree. It'll definitely boost us all and hopefully erase like the stigma behind pole dancing for like the regular people in the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. And maybe get more more um young polers and at least in the United States too, because I know like all around the world there's you know, they start them at, you know, very young age and I don't really see maybe not in our area, um, opportunities for younger polers to start. Yeah, I don't think I really know too many studios that do it either. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's an insurance thing, too. I, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. Okay. I'll look into that. But back to the interview. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for beginner pollers that you want to say? Ooh, beginner pollers. Don't give up. Like, it'll come. And it'll come in funny at least this is what happened to me it comes in like funny waves so you're like I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it and you keep but you keep showing up and you're like well I'm just gonna try it again a couple times and then you're like oh it was terrible and then one day it's like oh I did it and you're like where did that come from that's crazy so that's that's at least how I've learned so it was like no 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 yes no 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 yes and like I think if I had given up in the nose then I never would have achieved, you know, some of those yeses. And I think that like, you know, also that a trick doesn't define you as a human being. So like, I can't do a spatchcock. I'm not a bad person. I'm also not a bad puller. I can do other things like that's fine. And so sometimes like the trick is maybe not for you or you're not for the trick and that's cool. So I think finding like your own style too, that you like really like enjoy and like vibe with is also really important. But maybe trying, you know, all of the different ones. And so taking more of like a tricky class and being like, am I a trickster? Like, do I like this? Like, am I good at it? Do I care if I'm not good at it? Like, that's really fun. But then also, you know, taking some time to do heels and like slink around a little bit and say, do I like shaking my butt? Is that fun? 
am I bad at it? I'm bad at it, but like, I like it. So it's cool. Um, you know, or trying some, you know, the intricate like floor work, like leg waves. So sampling a little bit before you get, you know, super siloed into the style or whatever that you like. Um, I think that there's also so many different classes now that are available online. So if you have a desire to learn a particular style, or if you have a desire to train with a particular person, there's so much more opportunity to do that now. And that wasn't available for me. Like when we started, we were like on YouTube going, okay, so if you rewind the YouTube, watch it again. Okay, rewind the YouTube. And watch it again. And like, that's how you found or learned, you know, these like different things. And so now there's like so many like other like tools. And so, you know, use them. Since you brought up tools, do you mind sharing the tools that you offer on PSO? Because I know I've purchased some of them and some of our listeners might not even know you have them, your eBooks and all of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So through PSO, uh, we did put together some online tools, which are really great. Uh, so we have a little handbook about competing. So we have two of them. We have like a competition. Actually, we have three of them. So we partnered with Natasha Wang to write one of them. Uh, so she wrote kind of like a competition prep manual that has a lot of her own personal philosophies in there, which um, she was also a BSUN student um, and now an instructor. And so I've seen, or I've known her for many, many years uh, and her training regimen is, is wonderful and interesting and her philosophies are wonderful and just interesting. She's also an excellent writer. So the whole book, that one is really good. Uh, and then we have two that we put together on our side. So one's like training for live events and the other one is like training for virtual. So the difference between, you know, the two of them is like, maybe a little bit of the categories, but then also in the virtual one, there's like a section on like, how do you deal with like camera angles or like what's good for you when you put together a virtual routine? You know, how do you, how do you deal with the filming aspect of it versus, you know, the live aspect of it? Uh, we also have um, some other books that uh, different staff members have written. So we have a choreography 101. So that's like, if you need to learn how to put together choreo for a competition you've never done that before that was not something that I was particularly like strong at and so I would have loved like a little guide to like help me put that together so that's one uh we have a micro bends and pointed toes um so that one is if you need to try to straighten your knees and point your toes um that's the book for you and then I believe we also have a flexibility book as well so that's not written by me it's written by by another person um but but that one's awesome as well I, yeah, I bought the prep comp for live ones and the flexi ones. And awesome. I love them. I can't wait to buy more. They are really informative and do help a lot. Oh, good. Thank you so much. I'm really yeah. glad that you found them helpful. Yes. Um, goodness, I feel like I had another question. I completely forgot. Ah, I got it. Um, so Mandy asked if you have any advice for new pullers. And I know we're coming up in an hour. You're extremely busy. What advice would you give to maybe advanced pollers who want to try level five or maybe even pro but are scared to go against the already big name PSO winners is this like a is this one of those like I'm asking for a friend but like really asking <laughs> I'm asking not only for me but other pollers who yeah. are advanced who are in our studio and who I chat with have asked like they're curious they want to move up but they're kind of scared they mm -hmm. um to do the level five maybe even pro status yeah well like look you got to go where you're comfortable I'm not going to ever push somebody to say like hey you have to you know do this or that but I would definitely say that if you've got a few friends in your ear who are like yo you're ready you're ready like come on I would say like trusting those people and now if you have a bunch of people around you who are like, hey, maybe you should like do four. Also maybe trust those people, right? Because I think that like if you've surrounded yourself in a really good community, which, you know, I know that, that you all have, you're going to be honest with your friends. So that's, that's the best. When you watch somebody's routine or you're giving them advice about competition, you know, being honest with them and being like, hey, that part didn't look so good. We need to fix that. Let me help you let's improve it. Like, let's, you know, let's do that because you don't want your friend to get on stage and like have a bad time. 
Like you need to help them in the studio. Uh, so I would say, you know, listening, listening to people. Um, but I would also say that like, if you really have this dream of like, Hey, I really want to do it, just do it. And you should, because what's the worst thing that's going to happen. You're going to get on stage. You're not going to win. Oh, well. Last oh, place. Well. <laughs> I mean, like, I think that like we talked, I talked really, really briefly about this before, but getting on stage is brave and it teaches you something about yourself, which is maybe the most important thing that one can learn is more about yourself because you have to live with yourself in every moment of every day. Like you're you and you got to deal with you. And so if you can glean a little bit more information about who you are as a human being what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you're like under stress, that you can take that from this like little tiny moment in your life. And you can go like, oh, okay, that's how I acted, or that's how I felt, or that's how I behaved. And you can go translate that into the rest of your life. And if you liked what you did on stage, you can take that and bring it into your life. If you don't like what you did on stage or how you reacted, you can go back to your life and go like, hmm, like where are other areas that I might act or react in a way that like, I don't find positive and, and can I fix that? Or can I change that? Can I evolve that? I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. Oh. Will, will you be joining us in Northeast this year? I actually <laughs> don't know. I have to look at the schedule. I have to look at the schedule. It's very possible. Um, so it'll be either, uh, either myself or, or Sam. So Sam, our logistics manager is awesome. And I remember that like when she worked for us in the beginning, so she's not a pole dancer, um, but she's a crazy organizer like I am. And she used to like plan all these events. And we realized, I think like a year in that she'd been planning all these events and had never gone. And her first, like the first time that we sent her to an event, I think she went to Atlantic and she was like, we built the whole trust. And she was like, I just signed that. That's so cool, you know, and just like, like fell off of her chair, like that, that she had, you know, been putting all this together and seen it. Um, so she might, it'll either be myself or her, uh, and you'll be in good hands either way, I promise. Yes, I love that. Looking forward to meet her or meet you in person either way. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> we guys, well, I guess we should wrap things up <laughs> unless you have okay. another question, Chris, that's it. Unless she wants to keep going, I know she. Does. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sweet. Thank you. I did want to know what you did in your free time. If you have any like hobbies or anything other than like being so organized and putting on all of these great <laughs> shows all the time, yeah. can you fit anything else in? <laughs> okay, so yeah, well, I do. So two other things. I mean, no, look, like I have again, really great to people. Like I, I don't want to. I don't ever want to give off that like I am the only reason that these things happen like if we did not have like this incredible crew um I a would not sleep or be alive and b you know we wouldn't like have these wonderful shows so no I do have free time uh what I've gotten into uh so I'm a very social pole dancer and so COVID was really hard for me I think with training I do have a pole at home but it was not, it's not as fun for me, at least. Like I go to class, like not only to like learn stuff, but also to like be around like people. And so I ended up, um, because the studios in LA were closed, like really to like June of 2021, which was pretty crazy. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing like regular gym work. Uh, so I have like a lifting program that I do online called Booty by Brett, and it's for building your butt. And I am not a particularly, so, so he wrote a book with a friend of mine, uh, this, this, this trainer who has this program and he was in the, you know, in the book, he was like, you know, I train fitness, uh, models or fitness, you know, competitors. And so you have to like, understand that after like training a lot of people, you realize that like people do have like sort of a natural butt shape, which is determined by your bone structure which you cannot change. And so like, you have to be realistic about like how big your butt is going to get or what shape it's going to be, but you can build the best butt for you. And I was like, well, that sounds really inspiring. So I'm going to build the best butt for me. So I've spent time doing that. I've really enjoyed that. Um, my boyfriend loves it. <laughs> um, so that's, that's been great. Um, and then also, um, you know, I have a really, really amazing group of friends and we tend to throw really great themed parties and so I actually spend a lot of my time like 
designing like games for that or so so I really I'm a planner I think regardless <laughs> oh my god you're just living your best life I love that. I am I am you know I, I actually I told my boyfriend I, I this morning I was like you know I don't know if it gets better than this like oh, he's a really great partner I'm very happy like in our relationship like we're both healthy I have a great team we have a good business we work with a bunch of great people and clients. And I was like, I don't know if it gets better than this. Like, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love the, you know, sharing success stories for, for pole dancers too, because it's like this pole brings so much, so yes. many things to so many people and, and like careers and, you know, yeah. like everything. Well, it changed my yeah. life. It changed my life. Like I was an academic. It was like a yeah. straight lace, like ballet dancer, like yeah. love person like all that and and it it gave me a whole community of people to like really be a little bit more free yes and I love it really good yeah <laughs> oh Amy thank you so much for for sharing all this with us today <laughs> yeah you're welcome you're so welcome thanks for inviting me <laughs> our pleasure oh my god so and I guess we should we'll do our sign off now Okay. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for, for listening and watching to this episode of Pull on the Call. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And we are signing off <laughs> with Amy Guyon. Ooh, Ooh, I love both. And we are wearing the same shoes. I can't take both my feet off the floor because I'm in a spinning chair and I think I might die. Let's see. Danger. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. Yes, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's always oh, an ab yeah. workout to do that. I know, off. I know. <laughs>